Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. My name is Paul Brink. This is my day job. It's given me a great life. Like many entertainers, I like to pay it back, but I'd still like to do more. So my wife and I had an idea. What if we gave people the opportunity to help someone else and at the same time help themselves? Music gives me the ability not only to perform for people, but to take this platform and play hearts and, and hopefully create music in people's lives. And for me, in a huge way, that's what Build It Forward has become. It's become an instrument to, um, to inspire. Sunset, 40 miles to Canada, my truck. So many people have come together in such a short period of time. Standing here today, is, it's kind of surreal to me that it's all starting to happen all of a sudden. My idea for Build It Forward is to have people waiting for Habitat for Humanity homes travel overseas with the non-denominational Christian relief agency, Samaritan's Purse. I gotta be honest, I'm kinda nervous. I'm bringing two organizations together and hoping that they'll catch this Build It Forward idea. Habitat for Humanity places low-income families into home ownership and they get an interest-free mortgage on the house. You know, Samaritan's Purse is a Canadian charity that works around the world trying to uh, give hope to people. There's a lot of people living in extreme poverty and that's the kind of people that we are trying to help. We have lots of families, obviously the need in Calgary is huge. To earn a Build It Forward house, families must put in 500 hours of labor on their own house, in their community, and also in a developing country. In return, they get a home with a low-cost mortgage. Thanks. Thanks, Lisa. Habitat for Humanity has identified Jaylene as an ideal candidate for Build It Forward. A former musician living just outside Calgary in Cochrane, she's raising teenage daughters Alexis and Caitlin and 11-year-old Garrett on her modest salary as a clerk for Cochrane Town Hall. My ex was a lovely human being in the beginning and it went down a really bad path. And at some point I had to look at my children and say, I'm setting a really bad example for my girls as to how you should be treated. The environment my children were living in then, it was not a healthy place for them to be. They started saying, why are we still here? Jaylene has moved her children five times and thousands of miles in the past few years searching for a stable place to live. The last move brought them close to her sister, Jayanna. Jaylene has a job here and her daughters work part-time, but Cochrane's real estate is booming and their landlord may have to charge more. Jaylene is already struggling to pay the rent. It's really cold because it's an older home. Right now, Alexis is living in a storage room. There's no window, it's concrete floors. It's difficult, I think, for her to really feel settled in, and that could be the result of not having room to really settle into feeling like it's her own. It doesn't really mean too much to me, I guess. It's not even like a bedroom, really. It doesn't even have a window. Having a quiet place to study is vital for Jaylene. She's trying to move up the ranks at Town Hall, but she needs to upgrade her credentials. There's eight courses I have to take, and each one is about a two and a half months sort of block of time to try to cram on a Sunday night after the kids are in bed. It needs to get done because to be able to increase my value and my salary here, I need to make sure I've got what I need to do that. Getting a better job will also allow Jaylene to save for her children's education. My kids are growing and university is around the corner. It's the only way they're going to get ahead and I do not want them to struggle the way I have. My kids generally, I think, seem much older than they are. They lost some innocence somewhere along the way and so the house for them really is part of that. 
We're here at uh, Jaylene's place of work. This is the day where they get to make the choice of whether or not they're going to build it forward and they could actually get into their own home. Jaylene's family and co-workers have gathered to find out if she'll commit to 500 volunteer hours, especially since it includes leaving her family for a full week and coming to work with me in a developing country. Oh my God. Hi there. Hi. How are you? I'm Jaylene. She's been really excited about this opportunity to get a house and then to contribute to another family. I'm really eager to see her reaction. Uh, I'm not sure if she's going to cry or scream. I have a, an important question to ask all of you guys. Oh my God. Um, we're hoping that you'll agree to help somebody else in a developing country. And if you agree to do that, we're going to help you to get into a house too. Uh, would you like to build it forward? Oh, I, I really would. That would be I awesome. Really would. I'd love it if you would. That'd be great. Oh. <laughs> I just can't even, I'm stunned. I'm thrilled. I'm still in shock, I think, that uh, I just was given this gift and able to, yeah, I'm stunned. <laughs> she deserves it. She's worked hard and uh, gives back all that she can, even though she doesn't have a lot to give back. She's always helping out. She's one of the people that you just feel that you can rely on. She really is uh, one of those people that is always there to help. Jaylene and her children are our first Build It Forward family. To earn an interest-free mortgage on a home she can afford, Jaylene will have to volunteer 500 hours building homes in Canada and improving living conditions in a developing country. Today I'm waiting at the site of their new home to show it to them for the first time. Mountains. Okay, I think it's just up here. That's it. That's exciting. That is exciting. The home is in an existing subdivision in Cochrane, Alberta, close to parks and recreation areas. Okay, let's go have a look. The representatives from Stepper are here to explain what she's going to be getting, and it's just going to make the reality of it so much bigger and brighter, and knowing that what they're getting is actually right here, it's it's tangible. Hi, Randy, nice to meet you. Well, my sister was a single mom, and uh, knowing the hardships that she went through, I mean, if it's a single mother moving into this community, it's going to be really touching for me, because it'll hit me hard. And That's we're going to awesome. take a look around, but I wanted to show you some of these plants, so you can okay. see some of it here, too. This is the front porch area, mm -hmm. right over here that we're looking at, is yes. that right? Okay. In the basement, not shown on the plans, we've got a bedroom as well, and okay. bathroom downstairs. Who gets the bedroom in the basement? Definitely one. <laughs> really? <laughs> How did you decide that? Would you guys arm wrestle or something? My little brother wants the basement, but since I'm the oldest, I get first pick. I'm planning to, like, film my room with posters and like pictures of me and all my friends and like probably have some of the pictures of like this whole deal because it's pretty awesome. Can we go walk around and take a look? Yeah. Look at your walls, touch yeah. the wall. <laughs> Watch your step. Come on down. Oh. This is uh this is what it's gonna be. There's your windows over here. This is so awesome. A good foundation Amazing. for some some big dreams. Uh, the neighborhood is really, really nice. Like the houses here are, like beautiful. It's like all of a sudden, you know, that vision that I had initially is starting to come together and, and uh, it's pretty cool. It's just an incredible feeling to to know that this is all coming together. There's actually a basement for a house being built and uh, to see the look on their faces is wonderful. This like means so much to us. Moving here was like so hard for us and just having this house and knowing we actually have a place of our own that we don't have to be worried about. Okay, this is real, like this is actually happening for us and we're all just like huge smiles, like nonstop. That's probably like smiling in my sleep. I think that it's really important for anybody who is getting a helping hand to feel like they're contributing. Nobody wants to be put in a position where they're not able to help themselves in some way. But with three kids, a job, and schoolwork, it's going to be tough for Jaylene to get all her volunteer hours in. I've already started a bit of a spreadsheet for all the hours that I need to put in and want to put in for the end result, which is my home. How do I break these down? How do I make this a reality for us? I'm up at quarter to six, start rounding up all the kids, breakfast, lunches, backpacks, out the door, I'm off to work for the full day. Home for lunch usually, trying to put my essays together, back at 4.30, kids are home trying to get supper started, who wants what, off to basketball for 5.30, home by seven, again homework, then I start trying to finish the rest of my essay and getting it posted online to my instructors, scrambling all the kids off to bed, and then trying to hit to bed before midnight because my next day starts again at 5.30. So hours on top of that will be an entertaining challenge that I pray I'm up for. It can get overwhelming at times. 
um, but it needs to get done. Jaylene is serious about homework because Alexis needs to study hard to qualify for university scholarships. I wanted to be a vet since I was like six. That was like my goal in life, but I still could do it if I try really hard. I'm a firm believer that if something's important enough, you should find the time. And if that means I'm up till, you know, 12, 1, and I get back up at 6 and start all again, then that's what I do because I have to find the time to do it. It's not really an option for me. Today, Laurent from Samaritan's Purse has information Jaylene's been waiting for, which developing country she's going to volunteer in for Build It Forward. Jaylene is willing to do whatever is asked of her. Honestly, being a good old farm girl, I can get in there and haul everything you need hauled just as well as I can teach you how to run a new program on a computer. We're going to make sure that uh, she's excited, that her kids are, uh, are sure that she's in good hands, and that uh, she knows what she's going to be involved in. I am excited to know where they're sending me. Samaritan's Purse will be sending you to Mexico. Yay! And you will be going to a city called Tuxtla Gutierrez okay. in the south of Mexico. Samaritan's Purse tries to, to help. We work with partners like Mama Liz. Uh, she's started a home for children, and uh, you can see some of the children here. They're beautiful children, but behind each of these kids, there's very often a heartbreaking story. I am thrilled that's where I get to go, although I'll have a hard time walking away with a little brother or sister for you guys. No. <laughs> I have a serious soft spot for kids. It's just going to be overwhelming, I think, at all these little faces, but I'm just thrilled. Thrilled, thrilled. Jaylene has a lot of prep to do, but it's important to her that she bring the gift of music. That would be uh, sharing my gift on an, an entirely different level that I had never even imagined. It would be awesome. I remember when I was about 13 and I, I picked up that guitar and started to perform and play. It was a real spiritual kind of an awakening that happened for me. I remember feeling like maybe this was something that was supposed to be a part of my life. If I could do this and show people that they're loved, there's something about that that just makes sense to me. For that reason, I can't wait to join Jaylene in Mexico. I also want to learn as much as I can about the orphanage before I head out. He was crying, somebody heard that, and then they called the police. I listened to Mama Liz talking about all of the things she has in front of her, and it must seem kind of overwhelming sometimes. I mean, there, there's a, a lot of need for her kids, and, and I can tell when she talks about them that they're, they're her children. I mean, she loves all of them, you know. Sometimes those problems seem so big, how do we solve them? Well, one idea I have is to help their education. I think I might be able to make a couple of calls around here. I was wondering if you could maybe help me source some computers that I could take with me when I head down to Mexico. Oh, okay, yeah, oh, that, that would be, that'd be amazing, that'd be great. I'm excited for her to go there and like work with Mama Liz and like all the kids. Just looking at the pictures of all of them and like seeing them sing at their little Christmas concert kind of thing, it was like so cute. Although Jaylene's children aren't completely dependent on her, they're not used to being without her guidance either. I know they can manage, but I know I'm a fairly important cog in the whole wheel of how our family runs. But this is so important, so I'm gonna be bonding with these kids and I think at the same time I'm gonna be thinking, they got it easy, man. <laughs> My three back at home haven't seen any of this. To earn a Build It Forward home, Jaylene must volunteer for 500 hours. In one week, she's going to an orphanage in Mexico as a part of her commitment. I'm excited to know where there's... Today, she's doing another type of work with Fly, sweat equity on her own house. Jaylene's daughter, Alexis, and her sister, Jayanna, are pitching in and connecting with the community that has rallied around them. Gord, the framer from Stepper Homes, is here too, inspired by the Build It Forward movement. He's brought in his whole crew to volunteer today as a gift to Jaylene and her family. My son and I figured that we come up and help. I pay all my guys. I've got all of my friends, all the other framing crews, that they are donating their time. Oh, Gord tells us today this is his Christmas present. He and Cody both, who are giving everybody their direction and work and their butts off, are just doing this for us as a gift. They wanted to have this whole place framed up and sheeted and closed in by Friday and just out of the goodness of their heart. A huge chunk of it was built just like this morning. When we got here, there was outside walls and nothing else. And we built walls for a good chunk of the morning and had them up within probably three hours. And you could walk from room to room and it starts to really take shape. When they started putting the trusses on, I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> That is so cool in a day. What I've learned through music is how important it is to connect with people. And Build It Forward is really the same way. It'll only work if we make real connections between families and their neighborhoods. Then we connect organizations 
charities, businesses, and ultimately we create a link from the local community to, to the global community. And well, that's what my goal is with this project. The orphanage in Mexico where Jaylene will volunteer is home to more than 100 orphans. Today, Jaylene is asking her colleagues at Cochrane Town Hall to help her collect used instruments for the children. We've decided to do, my children and I, we want to get donated instruments that I can take with me to give to the children over there who really have nothing. And I want to reach out to my community in every way I can to try to make that move that forward. My goal for this trip is to leave a lasting impression and I think music for me is the way to do it. Jaylene's instrument drive is one way her love of music can connect her to her community. But she's also writing a song inspired by Build It Forward. I started out thinking about Paul Brandt, this one guy who stood up and said, I wanna make a difference. I think not enough people do that and so that was what started generating this idea about it just takes one. It just takes one person to do this. I have to do something. I have to make a difference. I have to put whatever gifts I have into play to change things for other people. But I've met a lot of people recently who are the epitome of this idea of my song. They are just this one person who steps forward and says, let me do something to make a difference. I think that music really speaks to people's hearts and souls and if used properly I think that it's the kind of thing where the platform can be used to do a lot of good for a lot of different people. A few days later Jaylene's instrument drive exceeds her expectations. So many instruments have come in that she's linked Build It Forward with the Legacy Children's Foundation, an organization that helps children from low-income families learn to play music. Jaylene heard about us and uh, wanted to help uh, local kids as well, so they contacted us and asked if we would uh, be able to assist in taking some of those instruments and finding them good homes. So what an amazing opportunity for Jaylene, who's getting the benefit of her program here, but now she's able to give back to some disadvantaged kids. We were hoping for the best and really impressed with some of the folks, what they brought and the things that they, they just really wanted to get involved. I want to tell you something, um, it's a 12 string. Awesome. And uh, my husband has passed away. Oh. who played it, and he played gospel music with it. We just oh. had a, a lovely lady come in um, to drop off a guitar for us. Um, she lost her husband about seven years ago, and it was his. Her only request is that someone play some gospel on it, and I'm pretty sure we can accommodate that. I link up with the Calgary Drop-In Center, which gives emergency shelter to the homeless. I've heard they can help build it forward in a big way. It's been uh, interesting for me to see the work that's being done here. Passionate people who are pouring into the lives of, of people who just need a little bit of help. I was watching some of the footage from Mexico and Mama Liz there. The computers that they have either aren't working um, or are way outdated. And uh, I got the word that maybe some folks here at the Calgary Drop-In Center could help us out with that. So these were donated yep. by Calgarians. Okay. They've been refurbished by our clients who are learning how to be computer technicians. Yeah. So they're pretty excited oh. about the fact that these get to go to Mexico. Well, I mean, they have no idea yet what this is going to mean to Mama Liz and the kids in Mexico. I can't wait to bring that story back, but this is amazing. Thank you so much for your oh, help well, with this. It's, it's incredible. Yeah, I think it's, it's build. part of that pay it forward, build it forward, that we get an opportunity to be part of something that's changing people's lives, which is what we do every day here. And so being part of this is an opportunity for us to really celebrate what we do to help people reclaim the things they've lost in life and to rebuild. As Jaylene's trip draws nearer, she begins to realize what her absence will mean to the household. Getting all packed and trying to get everything organized, making sure I've got what I need and they, the kids have what they need. Keep in mind, Auntie is in charge and Alexis is, you know, second in command. But Alexis tends to take on a lot of stuff when she's left here with her brother and sister. She knows how things run and she knows when Garrett gets quiet what that means or if Kate's in her room for too long, she knows probably just to peek in and see how she's doing and she knows the little signs. What is is this not going or going? Well, the instruments are, of course, dear to my heart because I've I mean, I've played music with little kids before and you see the joy on their face and so um, I love to share that when I can. So I'm, I'm really um, anticipating what that's going to be like when we can give them to the kids to try out and that'll be an exciting moment for me. I'm pretty thrilled with that. She was adopted into our family so we're pretty darn proud of her. She just puts so much thought and compassion into her music. We're just very proud of her. Plain and simple. <laughs> now it's time to work on the third part of her promise. Jaylene's headed down to Mexico ahead of me, and I, I can't wait to meet up with her. Oh, welcome to Mexico. Thank you. How hey. are you? 
Good to see you. Good to see you. Jaylene's volunteer work with Samaritan's oh, Purse will take place at Casa Hogar Orphanage in Tuxla. Yeah. Finally here. Through the generous donations of Canadians, Samaritan's Purse has been financing the orphanage since 1996. She's just walking through traffic. She's walking through traffic. Yeah. One of the things is that in Mexico, you can't beg. You know, people can sell things right, so they can make money. But what ends up happening is then they uh, recruit their kids. So they wouldn't be in trouble for begging because their parents have painted their faces and sent them in the street. That's dangerous. You don't put your kids walking through the streets. So this would be the typical type of village where some of the kids grow uh, that end up in Mamalis. A lot of alcohol, a lot of poverty. Some of these houses aren't even houses. They're just pieces of houses. The kids who live with Mamalis are very lucky. I want to go home and have my kids. Jaylene is touched by how warmly these incredible children greet a stranger. Well, we just arrived here at uh, Casa Hogar and got introduced to all the kids and feeling fairly overwhelmed. Mama Liz is a former social worker who set up this private orphanage because she saw rural children from destitute families being exploited and abused. The poor people, they, they don't give the chance to the children to play. They put them to work. They need to go to school, they need medicine, they need many things. It's a blessing that Mama Liz is here to take care of these kids that have been through. I don't even, it's hard to wrap my brain around. I see their faces and I wonder how much of my life I take for granted. Do I let my own struggles overwhelm me? And then I look at them and think, God, suck it up, girl. <laughs> like, really? I think they have a lot to teach me. Jaylene will be helping rebuild the playground area for the children. Hello, when I arrive the next day, Mama Liz's daughter-in-law, Soshi, shows me what makes this orphanage unusual in this part of Mexico. Soshi is the principal at the school. She makes sure that by the time each child is 18, they've finished high school and learned a skill or trade that will support them financially. Education is something that you, they, they can take and nobody can take it away. Like, is that normal for orphanages? No, or? actually most of the people and the visitors who come here are like very surprised about us having a school, our own private school here. Sure. With less than a week to help out, Jaylene meets with Mama Liz's son, Angel, to get down to work immediately. What did you got? Uh, is this el plan? This is the area and this is uh, the drawings of the yeah. playground. Okay. We have to remove all that's uh, existing okay. so that we can make room for the new playground. By the time I arrive to help, Jaylene and the other helpers have already made headway. Yeah. Well, when do we get started? Well, uh, I'm getting into this work thing. Working out in the sun. Some of the older boys are going to Oh, gonna great. So oh, cool. They're coming. They'll bring some of the tools. We're going to unbolt all the structure and just uh, take it apart. Shotgun, everybody get him for the long run. Don't know where we're going, but they Working Everybody so needs an assistant. <laughs> It was great working with Paul Brandt today. We were dismantling that old play structure and I was telling him what a great assistant he was. I think the best part though is just the fact that he even brought me here. That's the most amazing part of this whole journey is just being here is meant the most to me. Back in Canada, work on Jaylene's house is on schedule. I'm Andrea, nice to meet you. While Jaylene is in Mexico, Alexis pitches in towards the 500 volunteer hours her family needs. Today, she's helping in her community. You know what, it's kind of dirty. <laughs> we need you to clean it. A little it. bit dusty. <laughs> Build It Forward is creating new partnerships, so Alexis is helping the Legacy Children's Foundation. She's cleaning and tuning gently used musical instruments that will be given to children from low-income families. We do this because we love helping kids. And we're not only helping kids, we're helping families, we're helping communities. I love piano. And you still play at home, hey? Well, I did, but my keyboard kind of died. Alexis meets sad. Andrea, an energetic fundraiser who wants to raise more awareness about Build It Forward by staging a concert. When I read about this whole Build It Forward program, I knew that this was the charity that I wanted to donate to this year. 
So I made a phone call and just things snowballed from there. What can I do to help to get this whole concert thing up and running? I would really appreciate help posting posters throughout the community. That would be great. That would be a huge help to me. It would really put a face to what this whole thing is about. Yeah, definitely come and help you out. Thank you. After a long day on the playground, Teresa shows Jaylene how to make taquitos. Teresa was the very first orphan Mama Liz rescued almost 20 years ago. She's just like an integral part now of how this orphanage runs. And she cooks every day for the children here. She works here now um, as she's grown up here. And I found out today she wears hearing aids because her mother put boiling water in her ears and uh, destroyed her hearing. It's just heartbreaking. There's so many of the stories here, and every time I hear some of these things, it's, it shocks me, and I guess at some point when the stories start mounting up, um, it shouldn't anymore, but it always does. Although Jaylene has thrown herself into her work in Tuxla, she's anxious to know how her family's doing without her. Watch nobody's home. That'd be kind of funny. Hello. So, how's Mexico? Mexico is really awesome. We drove in. We just got swarmed by these amazing little kids. It was awesome. They just surrounded me. I mean, it was just amazing. It's fantastic. Like, I wish you guys could have come with me. You would just be overwhelmed by these kids. Like, Are you going to sing them your Build It Forward song that you wrote? I, I think I will sing them that one. But I've got to get back to building for them, so I better let you guys go. I'm glad everybody's doing good and having fun. Hey, take care. We love you. Bye. We'll see you soon. While waiting for Jaylene to return, Alexis, Caitlin, and Garrett help Andrea promote the concert to raise awareness about Build It Forward. I've asked your mom to sing, so we have to push this. Not necessarily for me, but for your mom. The kids are excited about the work they're doing while Jaylene is away. With the playground finished, Mama Liz shows Jaylene another important part of the orphanage that's in need of care. Oh my. Your guitars uh, are. Guitars. Uh, they're looking a little tiny bit worse for wear. <laughs> There's big warps, and that one looks cracked almost <laughs> yeah. all the way down the side. I've met some boys who really want to play oh, yeah. guitar. They really they want to. to I actually I have a little something for you. So if you want to stay here for a minute, wow, you just surprise. stay here, and I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Yep. Very good. We're going up to the music room, okay? in here. Yes, that is. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> I know how you feel about music. I thought maybe you could use a few more yes. instruments. We brought you many wow. guitars. Thank you. Can Antonio, you this is going to be for you. He loves to play guitar, and he he's a good and, boy. And maybe you and I can sit down and play a little guitar together, Antonio. What do you think of that? But for me, music has been my center. I'm an adopted child, too. I was given mm. up at birth. And on those moments when you get in your own yes. head, I turn to music mm. always. And so I know how much that brings you back to something yes. really special. I had heard you at a music room, and I thought, I've got to fill that up with something. So. Good. By the time Laurent drops by, Jaylene is teaching some guitar basses. Have you played? Ya has tocado guitarra. Primera vez. It's the first time. Fabulous. So Antonio here, he knows some of the chords. We're going to get Antonio to show um, Abigail some of the chords and give her the Spanish names that they use here to learn. Abigail, she had never picked up a guitar before, and she is one of those people that are just a natural at it. And she found out I'm leaving tomorrow, and she started to do this. And she walked over and picked up the guitar and just started to play. So I know that'll be her outlet, and that makes me extremely happy. I remember that as, as a child, that it was music, always music. And so to see that in another child, to have wanted to bring that and actually deliver is it it just warms my heart i i feel like i've i've done what i came here to do 
While Jaylene's busy with the children, I ask Soshi for a closer look at the computer lab I saw on the video footage back home. And uh, the kids come in here, learn, you know, different you know, ways to use computer, different programs, all that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yes. Be familiar with it. You've only got four computers. Okay. We have two computers working. Yes, two of them are broken. I, I think I might have a solution to your problem. Will you come with me? I can sure. kind of show you. Okay, uh, okay. let's go. <laughs> One of the things that's been absolutely amazing about Build It Forward, when we let people know what we were doing and uh, wanting to help people around the world, everybody wanted to become a part of it. Everybody wanted to, to help. Oh, and that, um, that's great. So there's some guys at the, at the Calgary Drop-In Center in, in my hometown in Calgary, and uh, they wanted to send a gift along with us for you. Oh. They, uh, they took <laughs> these, these computers, and they um, refurbished them completely to oh, laptops. Wow, look at and that. And we want to present these to you on <laughs> behalf of the you. Calgary Drop In oh, Center. The kids will be very and happy. build it forward. Okay. This will uh, hopefully help Thank out a little bit. Thank you very much. Yeah, Thank you. They will welcome. be very useful. This is one of the tools that Great. we need the most here at the school. Thank Great. you. You know, computers nowadays are not like an option, they are a need. And it's good that we are going to have more tools for the kids to be more prepared and skillful and ready. Jaylene keeps an important promise. Mama Liz's son and heel plays a beautiful gospel song with the 12-string guitar donated at the instrument drive. I used to sing since I was six years Thank of age. For all. And moments that when you have a lot of problems, to sing is... Uh, it makes, makes the difference, makes the difference. When they sing, when they are in the choir, when they play some instruments, makes a lot of difference. She's really happy. She's a great lady. I know that when she goes back home, she's gonna be a different lady. Working with these children, I know that she's gonna be catch. Jaylene has one more thing to do before going home play the song she wrote for her new friends. And when it feels like there's too much to be done Just remember this It takes just one Thank you. Thank you very much. It was my great, great, great honor Thank you. to meet you. Thank you. And we will see you again. Not goodbye. Thank you for your help, your work. They're so loving and they're so sweet and they're so in need of people to be with them and love them. And it's hard leaving. I would like more time. I miss them. My time in Tuxla has changed me completely. It has made me see a completely different view of the world and given me the strength to keep working on my own life. These children just brought me joy. I need to find a way to make sense of what I've seen and do something with that at home because if I just leave here and do nothing, that will really feel like I've, I've missed it and I don't think I have. The trip was great, but I, I cried a lot <laughs> because it was overwhelming to hear some of the things the kids had gone through, and yet they're still smiling. Good? We no. hear parties every night. The trip just gave me some real perspective. I look at my own life and I think, yeah, I've, I've had my struggles, clearly, but I think it changes how I react to those things that have come up even since I've gotten home. They taught me how to make taquitos from scratch. My kids did really well back here while I was in Tuxla. They were just happy to have me home and get back to our sort of regular thing. I think the only thing that's really different is probably me. I was getting a little tightly wound, I think, before we left. The effect it has on the kids is that mom's just calmer, and I found that when mom's calmer, everybody's calmer. I know my trip to Tuxla will stay with me forever. The children, all of them, Abigail and Antonio, and Miguel, I, I won't ever forget them. Build It Forward was about her trip to Mexico. It was one of those defining moments in life, a signpost that she'll always kind of look back to and go, that's where I turned here. It, and life will be 
pre-build it forward and post-build it forward for her. And uh, I think that um, it gave her more than she ever would have dreamed. As Jaylene tells her sister what happened in Mexico, she gets an update from the orphanage. Oh my gosh, she's precious. Hours after she left, a new infant arrived. The tiny girl had been left in a pile of garbage. Social workers knew that they had to take her to Mama Liz. Mama Liz names the baby Jaylena in honor of her Canadian friend. It was upsetting, but at the same time I thought, they saved one. One will be safe. With all that goes on in this country, if we can save one at a time, I guess that's what we need to do, even if it's just one at a time. Beautiful baby. Seeing Jaylene transformed by new experiences, Alexis is inspired. She watches a pet surgery to learn more about becoming a veterinarian. That actually really pumped her up for doing more for herself. So she's already asked me to come to the school and talk with the counselor there. So she's already got herself back in that focus of this is what I want to do, now how do I make that happen? Jaylene has faced numerous challenges in her life, so the move alone has been a huge transition piece for them. She's gotten through the hours. As a single parent, that's a really hard thing to do. So she hasn't had a lot of extended family and friends that have been able to help her out. So again, you know, the burden of this has fallen primarily on her shoulders. But her kids have been great. They've helped out. I think it's brought the family closer together, and uh, Jaylene can only go up. We are here doing the Build It Forward concert. I'd written a song after getting involved in this, so I'm gonna perform that song tonight. I'm excited for my mom now that she gets to like, sing again in front of a crowd. We have a wonderful lineup of entertainment for you this evening. <laughs> and the songs that she wrote, they're really amazing. She's just really magical when it comes to music. She's gonna shine. She's gonna be the best one there. When I sing, it's all about emotion for me. My goal for tonight is to make it through my song. Just remember this, it takes to smile. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's soul for music right there. Jaylene's performance at the concert allowed her to express what the Build It Forward experience has meant to her. As the family gets busy packing for the move, the Legacy Foundation drops by with a thank you for Alexis. Hey, how's the move going? Hey, good. Come on in. We got How's... something for you guys. You do? Yeah. Alexis, Daryl is here. Some, something else for you guys to move. So I have two keyboards here. Why don't you pick one? I understand you've been waiting to practice and you've been dying to get back at it again. Yes. So this is what we do. This is what we do for a living. So we're pleased to do this. You're welcome. Give me a hug. Oh, I can actually geez. play. Can actually and I found play. like 10 new ones. Yes, tonight I honestly probably won't even sleep. Like It's overwhelming, actually. I wasn't expecting him at all. He just made her weak. Jaylene has returned from volunteering in Mexico and has performed her new song at a community event for Build It Forward. Now, the family's packed up for their big move. This is an emotional day for Jaylene. With builders, suppliers, and other supporters here to celebrate, she and her family have earned the keys to their new home. It has changed my life in so many ways that I can't come up with the words most of the time to say what that has done for me. You're one of those people for me now, Paul, that if you say come and stand up to here in horse manure for an hour and do it with a smile on your face, I just say where. Good, I'm, good to I'm know, totally good to know. <laughs> You've all just been amazing and we appreciate it so much. So thank you. The key today? Jaylene's family can't wait for moving day, so they make a beeline from the key ceremony to their new house. It's such a gift. It already feels like home. When I see them clowning around and how they feel like this belongs to them already and we just got the keys, that's what I need. That is the part that gives me a sense of, yeah, I, I did it. I actually did something right for these kids. I did it. 
Moving day means the promise of a permanent home for the family. Yeah. The kids were saying, maybe we'll get there and they'll say, April Fools, you don't get to move into your new house. <laughs> of course I'm gonna miss this room, like the best room I ever had. I'm pretty excited for the new room. And there's actually a window in there. So it's not like a dungeon. I didn't actually think this day would ever come for me. I'll be a blubbering idiot <laughs> if I focus too hard on that. I have a couple of housewarming gifts to drop off at Jaylene's. Jaylene, I have an incredible connection with her because uh, we're both musicians and, and we have this incredible love of music. And uh, I've got a gift that I've um, really thought a lot about that's really special to me. And I can't wait to see the look on her face when, uh, when we, we make this presentation. I think that we're ready to rock here. I'm pretty excited about it. Build It Forward has got a convoy. It's time to rock. Let's go. Looks like we got us a convoy. This is awesome. While Garrett is on a field trip, Jaylene and the girls talk about the first week in their new home. They have no idea I'm dropping by. Puppies? Why is there a huge red truck in front of our house? Huge big rig pulled up in front of the house and Paul Brett hopped out. And they hauled in this beautiful hope chest with a quote that really does set the tone for my life. And, uh, I thought that suited you guys. More than anything, I just kind of wanted to leave you guys with kind of a memento of everything that we've been through together. I brought an instrument from my private collection to give to Jaylene. It's called a salt tree. It's a neat steel string instrument with a bow. That is beautiful. Oh, thank you. Like it. Oh, you're you're very cool. welcome. <laughs> what is Build It Forward going to do for you from now on? I mean, where, where does it take you from here? My work with Legacy was fantastic. Yeah. And so I'm going to continue getting donations for them. And so really, that's my gift. And I'll keep giving it as much as I can. <laughs> I'd love to take a look around. Can I get the grand tour? To be able to, to be here, see it done, see furniture and everything moved in was great. And we wanted to bring a little gift along as well. Um, um, because of all of the great contributions that have happened through Build It Forward, we had one specific family come forward and say, we want to actually um, give of ourselves and build something. This is not a good luck chest, it's a hope chest. Uh, we want to give Jaylene and her family um, something to contain all of their hopes and dreams in it and to wish them all the best for the future. It's quite a difference. It is a room, I have like a closet, a window, carpet. I pretty much have my own bathroom now. It's like right out my door. I don't know, it just makes it easier for everyone. We all have our own space. This is an enormous blessing for me, the home, this whole experience. Jaylene and her family have really connected with their new community. Because of their experience with Build It Forward, they're making the time to volunteer at local events like the Children's Festival. 